So this video right here is supposed to show the highlights of Donald Trump's uh, presidency and his highlights and his downfall, right? So uh, I'm going to play this video. I'm going to get my commentary on it. And maybe at the end of this video, many of you might can decide how you feel if Donald Trump should run in 2024. I have a feeling it's going to be beautiful. Once upon a time, four years and thousands of tweets ago, the U.S. seemed a very different <laughs> place. This video comes off as biased the moment it gets started. <laughs> you can't make this up. The land of Lincoln knew nothing of very stable geniuses, bad hombres, and nasty women. But America was about to become great again, or so one real estate mogul turned reality TV star would have us believe. So why not grasp the nettle, Donald Trump, and announce in this interview that you will run for the White House in 2016? Well, I'm uh, yeah, uh, for, the, for those of y'all who don't know, I have, um, I started putting the Javier Javier show on uh, podcast form. Uh, so you click the link below in the description, you can find the podcast. Um, all of my links are under my link tree. So you click that, you can find the podcast. It's on Spotify, it's on Google Play, it's on Anchor. So y'all can definitely find it there. Um, so I do have um, my Javier Javier show on podcast right now. And I am thinking about doing some other platforms. And I'll let y'all know as the time comes. All right. Very, that would make a lot of people happy, I can tell you. And probably some people not so happy. Anyone who thought he was joking stopped laughing when that escalator descended and he opened his campaign by attacking Mexican migrants. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. All right, so here's the thing, right? If Donald Trump would have made that statement in a reverse manner, if Donald Trump would have said, many of these people are good people, but some of the people that's coming over here are murderers or whatever the case may be, blah, 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 right? It would have been received totally different. But the problem that people had with that statement was he said they're bringing murderers, they're bringing eggs out of that, and some are good people, which made it seem like majority of them are those things, and then some aren't, right? If you're a conservative, you're going to take the position that he didn't mean all of them. What he was saying is they are having people of that stature coming over here. Yes, of course, there are good people here. We don't think all Mexicans are those things, right? But if you are from a liberal perspective, you're going to take the position of he just called all Mexicans rapists and murderers and things of that sort, right? And what we have here is whether you're willing to give him the benefit of the doubt or you're not. And that's how you're going to determine how you felt about that statement. Um, question for you, Javier. If both Trump and DeSantis run, who would you vote for? And why do you think that person is the best choice? Um, if I had to choose between DeSantis and Trump, I think I would choose DeSantis. Um, Trump does have a lot of baggage. I don't think that Donald Trump uh, can necessarily control his rhetoric. I think Donald Trump with policy, with less rhetoric, would make a lot of people happy. But I think Donald Trump can't get past the rhetoric, which DeSantis seems to be a much more... Um, calculated speaker and some people might not like that some people might think that they don't want a smooth talker they want somebody to tell you straightforward how exactly how it is but at the same time other people do feel like the is a strong conservative and he does stand for conservative values for the most part and i think plenty of people will settle for the sentence or uh will be happy for the sentence run <laughs> okay i got you brother i, I find it Forget Bridges, this construction mogul was into something else. And Mexico will pay for the wall. <laughs> that set the tone for an unprecedented, unedifying race. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Right? What I say is what I say. When you're... You know, it's funny, when they do short videos like this, what ends up happening is they'll... Uh, they'll pick and choose certain clips and put it right after. Um, and that, I don't think that's what Donald Trump said immediately after that's what she asked, right? Uh, so they're picking and choosing what goes in and what goes out, right? Um, and I know you can't put everything in these videos, but when it's heavily one-sided, 
And maybe they're going to show something more positive, I guess. Sorry, they let you do it. You can do anything. <laughs> Whatever you want. Grab them by the... <laughs> I can do anything. Say what you want. Donald Trump is unprecedented. He, he, he's out of this world unprecedented. You, you got to give him that. The following January, Donald J. Trump became the 45th president of the United States. This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. We stand tall and we stand strong. A record-breaking women's march followed his inauguration. <laughs> then more nationwide protests once he announced a sudden travel ban against predominantly Muslim nations. He launched a missile strike in Syria, rolled back countless environmental protections and announced, the United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. Delivering on tax cuts, his reform bill was signed into law as promised. The stock market flourished. The wall- I really want somebody to explain to me what joining the Paris Climate Accord is actually accomplishing, right? I, I, I really, as I looked into it, I really thought that, you know, this is not really going to change anything. Most people say it's more of a gesture. Um, if America is willing to, you know, step up and put on their big boy pants and do something to fight climate change, that it will encourage people across the world to do the same. The issue is we have actors in this world like China and Russia and India who are more concerned with, you know, <laughs> being number one or trying to get to the top. They're not going to sign up for that. And sadly, especially China, especially India, have a lot of pollution. And I, I just, for the life of me, I'm not with the virtual signaling. And I feel as if, like, I really didn't care about the Paris Climate Accord. Um, I really did. Was signed into law as promised. The stock market flourished. The wall, not so much. Save he began a truck. Oh, def definitely. China's building high, high, road, um, high speed rails and they're doing it like crazy and super fast. But one thing that China has that we don't have here in America is uh, a, a very centralized government that dictates and make things happen on time. America has become so bad at building and getting things done. So bad at it. All of this red tape and all of the hoops you got to go through. They always end up over budget. Sometimes projects don't even get finished. There is a major problem in America when it comes to getting things done, and a lot of taxpayer dollars are wasted constantly. Paris Climate Accord does nothing because the other countries don't care. Uh huh. So I pack that they uh, concentrate the pollution, but they get more of their energy from renewables than we do. I'll have to check that. Uh, let me uh, let me look that out real quick. Mm, uh, mm. Energy is China energy. Uh, let's see, more energy efficient than America. Asian America, even China and India are more energy efficient than the U.S. A new report ranks two of the world's biggest polluters, China and India, ahead of the U.S. when it comes to energy efficiency. All right, well, you're absolutely right. Look at that. The more you know, right? The more you freaking know. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> the people who are good at building are on the left of us. I would not try to use China as uh, a prime example of uh, something to aspire to, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I'm not saying that you said China, but um, necessarily. Because uh, a lot of these other places have their own issues. That makes sense. Troubling flirtation with condoning white supremacy following a deadly clash between white nationalists and anti-racists in Charlottesville, Virginia. If you look at both sides, I think there's blame on both sides. And I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. All the while, President Trump fought to beat the scandal that would dog most of his first term. The Mueller inquiry into Russian... All right, so I'm going to uh, stop playing this because um, this this was supposed to be the best and worst moments of Donald Trump's presidency, but it just seemed like they're more focused on the bad of Donald Trump. And I'm not necessarily with that because they're not going to highlight anything that Donald Trump accomplished that people were really happy for that really helped a lot of people. They're just, they're just not going to do it. And I don't want to be, I'm not interested in one-sided views of his presidency. 
Um, I'm really not. They're not going to talk about, talk about opportunity zones. They're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about a lot of different things that Donald Trump did that a lot of people were happy about. Um, but that's all I have to say on that matter. One in a million, a million, the one villain. Too hot to be in the kitchen. I'll end up melting the ceiling.